Hello everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions for match day two of the Champions League. Match day one was fantastic with some great scores and some great games. As always, there are timestamps down in the description and you can use the YouTube chapters feature as well, but never use them. Watch the whole video. We have Amazon affiliate links and we have Audible affiliate links down in the description as well. So if you're going to buy anything on Amazon or you want an audio Audible free trial, click down there below. Also go check out Grandstand Better's back, back their tips and you will win money. It's that simple. Description down below as well. Um, we've got a ton of games to go through, so I'm not going to waste much more time. I'm just going to say stick around to the end because Thomas will be discussing the, the news that broke the other day about the uh, European Super League. Ian, it's not discussion, it's a rant. Okay, we will be having a rant about the European Super League. And more interestingly, Thomas, as we are approaching Halloween, Thomas will be giving rather ghoulish and spooky names to every one of these clubs. Let's see how he gets on. Thomas, lead us into the first match. Ghost Emotive Moscow versus the Ghouls from Munich. I can't believe he's actually pulled it off. I threw him in at the deep end and he has come out swimming. Tom, how much are Bayern Munich going to win this week, Bob? Oh, my God. You know, I'm pretty sure I predicted 4-0 in the Atletico Madrid did. result. And they did. absolutely tore them asunder. It was standard Bayern Munich. It was standard Bayern Munich. I, 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 don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it was a 4-0 game. They they just kind of... No, Atletico Madrid weren't that. Weren't 4-0. We didn't deserve to lose 4-0. No, no, no. No, they did, because this is Bayern Munich, all conquering, all greatness Bayern Munich that go through the gears. If you go into second gear, they just go into third. If you go into third, they go into fourth. They have like 15 different gears as well. It's not really fair. But anyway, Lugmode of Moscow had a two-all draw with Salzburg. Um, anything you want to add from that result, Ian? Yeah, not a great result for either side, really. Both sides would have been looking for a win. Both sides are probably going to be, look, you know, if any side's got any chance of getting second in this group let's face it Bayern Munich are winning it they needed to kind of beat the other side so a, two, a draw doesn't help either one of them let's but we're, we're, we're wasting time here Bayern Munich are going to win 5-0 same as these 5-0 Zombie Madrid versus Drunken Salzburg very Halloween Drunken Salzburg um, 50% so it's a 50% shot yeah, obviously, you know, the reverse of what we just talked about. Atletico Madrid, bad 4-0 defeat to Bayern, but everyone loses to Bayern unless you're Hoffenheim. Um, and um, Salzburg had that lackluster draw against Moscow. Um, Tom, any much to add on this? No, this is going to be the world's most boring 2-0 Zombie Madrid victory. Yeah, I, I can't help it. Two games in, we're matching each other's scores. It's crazy. I can't believe it. Yeah, I also think Atletico Madrid will win. Nice and easy 2-0 win. Maybe Suarez will get one. Who knows? Mutar Dedet versus Foggy Milan. They're getting better. I can't wait till we're the 15th or 16th game in. Um, Shakhtar Donetsk easily had the most surprise result and the best result of the round, beating Real Madrid 3-2. But also as well, with so many illnesses and injuries in their side as well. I think they had 10 first-team players missing, went to Real Madrid. They didn't play that game at the Bernabeu, did they? No, I don't think so. It's like a, a training ground or something. Beat them 3-2. Went 3-0 up as well. Wonderful performance. I mean, the, the third goal especially was a great individual performance. Some sloppy defending for the first two, especially for the own goal. I mean, what the hell was Courtois and Varane doing? Um, but, you know, and that puts them in good stead to come up against the Inter Milan side who were also didn't who didn't win on match day one. Inter Milan drew Gladbach 2-2, but Lukaku has literally just taken off where he left off. He, he, he's just scoring goals for fun. Yeah. It's getting ridiculous. Um, please send him back to Man United. We need players. I think Inter have got to be a bit careful because last season they did this. They, they were paying catch-up early doors, and in the end it came back to haunt them, and they ended up going, finishing third. Um, this is, they, should be, they should be beating Munch and Gladbach at home, and to, come, and to be able to rely on a last-minute Lukaku goal to pull them out of it, really. Uh, they were quite lucky to get the draw in the end. I don't know how to call this one. This one's tough. I think I think when, you, when you're when you stuck in a situation like this, you just got to back the big team and hope that they come out with it. Conte's Milan have been pretty freaking good all year. They were really good last year. 2-0 to Foggy Milan. I will back the big team. And to me, Ukrainian giants are bigger than Italian Giants, and I will be backing Shakhtar Donetsk to win. No, I think they'll get a draw. 
I think it'll be one each. Little Red Riding Munchen Gladback versus Zar Madrid. What are these? What? How are these ghoulish in any way, shape, or form? We don't know. Well, <laughs> we probably. I'm probably gonna have to give this up in a couple of times, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Munchen Gladback, from their point of view, was an excellent two-two draw, although. To be winning going into the 90th minute, they probably should have won it. Very good goal by Hoffman. Uh, he sort of broke clear, but it was a really nice finish through the legs. Uh, Real Madrid, wow. Where do they pick themselves up from here then, Tom? I think I think this is classic, though. Like, it's a big team. They've had a bad result, and we've all decided that they're absolutely terrible. terrible. Obviously, it's on the eve of going into the uh, El Clasico, but it's not exactly like Barca have been lighting the league on fire either. And... You know, Komen showing big balls. We'll talk about that in a minute to criticize his best player publicly. But, you know, to each his own. Uh, Madrid, I think Madrid are going to win this. Focus on Madrid. 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 He gets I think Madrid are going to win this. Zidane looked furious at times in that game. And that's kind of what you need. You need that sort of legend of the game who's going to literally dress all of them down. They did fight back in the second half. They got a couple goals. They maybe could have had a third. Aldrich's goal was wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic goal. I miss him being in the Premier League because he's so good. Anyway, enough of that. Madrid to beat Mönchengladbach. 3-1. Yeah, there's never that many goals on a 2-2. is weird because Mönchengladbach don't really seem to be have that many goals in their game. And I think this one will be quite tight. I think... Did you go 2-1 Madrid? 3-1. I think it'll be 2-1. Especially Madrid without Ronaldo. Porto Porto versus the Minotaur of Olympiacos. Yeah, I, I, I phoned the first one in there, sorry. <laughs> Porto lost 3-1 to Man City, probably expected it, but I actually thought they played quite well in the game. It was only City who got a couple of goals late on. Uh, Diaz's goal was a wonderful individual goal for them. Um, Come against it, another side who won, Olympiacos. We say that we, we backed them to beat Marseille. They left it late, but they did themselves. Uh, Hassan, I'm sorry, I'm going to be bad at pronouncing this. Hassan Makoub with um, a really nice header at the end of the game. Really good finish for him. Uh, but that was a tight game, and they've come out the right side of it. Always have to struggle back in the Greek sides away, though, myself. Yeah, they don't tend to travel that well, but you, I feel bad for Porto in one state. Did you see their manager today coming out and talking about Pep Guardiola? He, he was really angry about the language used and the way he acted and the way the bench acted and the things they were doing. Wait, their manager came out? And every time I make a point, Ian Allen just has to kick me in the leg and make me hop about. Anyway, Porto are going to win at home 2-0. Yeah, I think um, I think as well. Don't hate us, Olympiacos fans. We have been backing you before. But I do think Porto will win as well. I think it will be a um, 2-0 win for Porto. Dead Olympians from Marseille versus the Blue Devils from Manchester. City obviously got off to a good start in the Champions League. They always seem to over the last few years. They got the 3-1 win. They weren't great, but they did just enough to get the victory. Uh, although Fernand Torres' goal was very good, uh, I thought, at the end. Marseille, yep, yeah, they came out on the wrong side of that tight uh, uh, game against Olympiacos and lost 1-0. This is a tough one for Marseille because they're back at their, they're like backs against the wall now. They've lost that game. Um, this is a tough one for them. They have been garbage this year as well in the league. They haven't been great in the league. PSG haven't been great in the league. French, the big French sides seem to be falling apart to start this year. And City are not the team you want to come up against because unless they gift them a bunch of goals, which they will at some point give somebody a bunch of goals, they're going to rip this team apart. I don't think they'll rip them apart. I, don't, I, I think they'll win 2-0, but I don't think they'll rip them apart. 4-0. 4-0. Freddy Atalanta Kruger versus Ajax Cleaning Liquid. Nothing scarier than Cleaning Liquid, Alan. Nothing scarier. Atalanta, as we expected, put Michelin to the sword, beating them 4-0. Um, Gomez's goal, the second goal, was the pick of the bunch. It was an absolute screamer from the edge of the box. But the first goal was really well worked as well. Uh, they got the job done early and they just took their foot off the gas. I actually really unlucky against Liverpool. Really, I could have e they should have easily got something out of the game. Would they have gotten something out of the game with Donny van der Beek being there? Oh, maybe. But they seemed to do a good job without him. Um, it was really just a stupid own goal. Yeah. Absolute out of the blue own goal. Uh, I don't know how the defenders managed to almost, I don't know, miss kick it into the bottom corner. 90% of all long goals when you see them happen, you're like, did you 
Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> but it must be done on purpose, because no one does that on it. Oh, yeah, he's done it Look, on it. You're speaking to a, um, a professional own goal machine back in the day, Tom. Oh, really? Like, How many, you, Alan? We never mean it, but they have. <laughs> well, um, I think Atalanta are going to, and uh, pardon my language, but they're going to F up this Ajax side, and they're going to win 3-0. This has... All the makings of being a classic. It really does. Both of them play great football. Both of them like to attack. Um, and when you have set games like that, I just hope that it's tight. But I hope there's a lot of goals. This is one of those crazy, very biased opinions, high-scoring games. Atalanta 4, Ajax 3. Always walking alone, horror pool versus the Vikings from Midland. No, no laughing, no excitement for those names. Apparently, I've just literally done my job. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the joke, the joke is waning thin. Um, and there's like ten more games to go. Whipping boys of the group, FC Midland. Uh, tough trip for them to go to Anfield. Uh, regardless of Liverpool's struggles at the moment, you would think they're going to win this one nice and easy, and end up with two wins out of the two for the first two games. Three 0 to Horrorpool. Yeah. Um, enjoy it, Midland. Three 0 Liverpool. FK Krasnodar versus Scum. <laughs> oh, Chelsea fans. Just a reminder, if anybody clicks on timestamps, Tom is doing Halloween-themed names, and he just referred to Chelsea as Scum. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, folks, so just put the comments down below, because I am lost for words. But we do have some so focus, Thomas, because we do have some things to talk about in this one. Uh, this was draws all around in this group. Krasnodar... Good result for them away at Wren. Wren looked pretty tidy side, I must admit. It was good for them to get a 1-1 um, a draw away. And usually the Russian sides were back in their home form to steer them through. I thought Chelsea 0-0 against Sevilla is a good result. Yeah, Even though the English the... paper will tell you it wasn't. We're going to need the media and most Chelsea fans to chill the hell out. If you watched anything from last year, you realise that Sevilla can beat Barcelona, they can beat Real Madrid, and they can beat everyone in the Europa Cup. And United. they never... Sorry? And United... Yeah, and they never make it look good. But this is a team with more European pedigree than Chelsea can dream of at this point. They just drag out these games, and a nil-nil draw is perfect because it sets you up to beat up Krasnodar, which is the scariest monster I've ever seen, and Ren. And as long as you score some goals against them, that's more than Sevilla are going to do because they are not goal machines. Whereas the Chelsea attack is possibly one of the best in the world they've got so much speed so much pace and like eight different strikers at any one time they can put on the pitch it was a good nil nil draw be happy with it don't worry about it you're gonna beat the beast from the fk of the krasnador and you're gonna beat him four nil the beast from the east three one to chelsea he's a, he's given up he's given up and we're gonna say the names and i'll say it for once Sevilla versus ren so Sevilla weren't quite able to Sevilla Chelsea, but they did get a nil-nil draw, which they'll view as a good result for them. Ren, as you said, drew one all with the beast from the east, Krasnodar. I don't see this game being particularly exciting, but I do see Ren getting Sevilla'd, and I see it being one nil to the Oranges. Yeah, Ren look a really good side, actually. It's the first time I've really watched them, and they impressed me. Um, they really should have won this game. They had the chances. They threw it away. Uh, Girassi looks a really good striker for them. He had a chance. He scored the penalty and had a chance late on. And one thing as well, look at home kits. Ren, beauty. What a beautiful kit. Any side that has a kit like that, I'm backing. Um, but back against Sevilla, and you are a fool. This is the Sevilla side that beat Man United. You're not just saying that. They have beaten Man United multiple times in the past. They're not to be taken lightly if they can beat a side like Man United. If Sevilla can beat Man United, they can beat anyone. And they're taking that form in the win against Man United into this game. 2-1 win for the beaters of Man United. Dortmund versus Zenit St. Petersburg. And I'm well, just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Dortmund need to sack their manager. Just get rid of him. <laughs> you, you, have, you, have you got rid of him? Is he Hansi Flick? Uh, is he gone? Not Hansi Flick. Fabian Lucien Favre. Lucien Favre, yeah. Favre's gone. Dortmund, really, in the last two years, haven't impressed me. Uh, they got a lot of really good young players. But what the hell are they doing th losing 3-1 to Lazio? Yeah, and it was a poor performance as well, as you can imagine, the scoreline. They didn't really get going until they were 2-0 down. Second half, they were a lot better, but they couldn't score. And obviously, until Haaland stuck one in the back of the net with a bullet, like he always does. And they've, they've 
you know, put themselves up against the corner where they've, they've got, almost gone into must-win games. Luckily, I think they will win this game and they'll be too strong for a Zenit side who lost to Bruges um, yeah. and only scored of an own goal. Uh, they'll win 3-0 Dortmund. Yeah, Maybe more. Uh, we talked about this enough times. Russian clubs generally at home do better than they do away. They didn't even do that well when they were at home. So Dortmund to win 2-0. Club Brugger versus Lazio. Ciro Immobile actually played for Dortmund in he the did, past, yeah. didn't he? he did, yeah. yeah, so he stuck them to the sword early, an own goal, and then Akka, Akpro, which... Akra, Akra, really... Akra, Akpro. Um, Daniel Akra, Akpro, his brother, actually uh, plays in the football, in the English Football League. Well, that John genuinely Louis. looks... It looks like a yogurt-based drink that's good for my gut, but apparently he scored. Uh, Club Bruges beat Zenit 2-1. That's a good result for them, and that sets them up really well to at least take third place in this group. I think Lazio is too strong for them, though, Ian, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I think we underestimated Club Bruges a little bit because they were actually quite good last year as well, putting some good performances against Liverpool. Um, I think they'll be they'll, they'll be putting a decent show, but I think the I think Lazio will win two one. I can only mirror that score two one. Not going to attempt the names. I'm just going to say FTC versus Dinamo Kiev. So Kiev lost two 0 to Juve. Not a huge surprise there, though. We did think I think did we think they would do better? I feel like we thought they'd do better. Uh, I think we thought I think we thought Juve would run out quite comfortable winners. They they were a good side, but they're they're like second best by quite a long way in the Ukrainian league. Uh, and FTC proved that Barca are a shadow of the former team they are because they managed to score against them as they lost five one. Barca, what are you doing? Now you know we'll talk about that in a second. Well done to FTC for getting a goal against mighty, all conquering, all loving Barcelona with the greatest player to ever slice bread, Lionel Messi. Focus, focus, focus. Focusing, focusing. Dinamo Kiev to win away from home, one nil. Uh, yeah, I think this one, this one will be the one FTC will look at in their group and saying this is one where we can get something out of it. I think this one will be a draw. I think it will be a one-one draw. What's happening, Ian? It's Ronaldo versus Messi again for the thousandth time, but it's Ronaldo versus Messi in Europe. Is Ronaldo going to be playing though, Tom? Because I know he's had his injury problems. Is he? Is he going to be back? To the, oh, he's been in quarantine, hasn't he? He's been. He, I think his quarantine's over at this point. Um, while Thomas Fierity looks that up, I'll just say, uh, yeah, uh, Juve obviously got a comfortable win against Dinamo Kiev. Morata uh, with a couple of goals. It was a very, very comfortable win. Barcelona obviously had a routine win as well. Even had a man sent off and uh, conceded a goal, but it even seemed to just make them play better. And they got goals late on against FTC, which made the scoreline reflect their dominance in play. Obviously, the usual suspects getting goals like Messi, Infati, Dembele, Coutinho, Coutinho, Coutinho and Gonzalez. Ronaldo will get to take a test 24 hours before the Barcelona match, and a negative result means he'll be able to face... Barcelona. Barcelona, clearly the greatest club to ever play football. Lionel Messi, clearly the greatest footballer ever to play football. This is the greatest side to ever play football, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to have to... St- I can't even do this. I'm bored of this Barcelona team. They can see it to FTC. I love this Juventus team. Morata got that brace. I'm going for a Juve win. I don't rate this Barca side. I'm going to agree with that completely. I, I don't think this Barca side is very good. I think that 5-1 win doesn't mean anything. I mean, that, that, that paper's over cracks, so they were poor in their last Liga outing as well. Uh, I think they lost 1-0. And um, I think this Juventus side is going to be too strong for them too. I, I think they're going to win. I think it'll be a 2-0 win for Juve. Istanbul, Bashak Shahir versus Paris Saint-Germain. So PSG were quite poor. Um... I'm not not bigging up Man United in this. I was let down by PSG's play in that game. They never seemed quite at the races. They had a really hard time getting the ball to Neymar and Mbappe. And when they did get the ball to Neymar and Mbappe, neither of them seemed to be occupying any area of space. Yeah, that means that the wing backs and the the center backs were marking them out of the match. But this PSG side have really started the 2020-2021 season badly, haven't they? Yeah, they have done. And I think they're a little bit just almost complacent coming against the Manchester United side where they probably looked at and thought, well, Man United are struggling. We should be able to beat them. But then you realise Manchester United play in the fucking Premier League and you play in the French League. You shouldn't underestimate them. <laughs> um, but before we get back onto that, I just want to say I was also disappointed with Istanbul as well. I know they lost 2-0 to Leipzig and probably most people will have expected it. But I thought they should have put on a better showing. They were very sloppy, gave goals away. They almost looked a little bit overruled. 
by the Leipzig side, a little bit like when they played Inter Milan. I thought they would have got over that a bit more, um, like almost at that stage fright. And um, hopefully they'll be able to be backing Istanbul and put on a better showing. Because this is a tough one for PSG to go into after losing your first game. I feel like PSG are one of those sides that like internationally are loved because they have Neymar and Mbappe and it has less to do with the team being good and more to do with a couple superstars who are just like a constant clip show. So I'm sure PSG fans and you know all of you around the world are mad at me for saying this right now, but I don't think PSG are getting out of this group. I think they're going to go to the Europa League and absolutely smash it. They really haven't impressed me. And I think Istanbul, Basak, Basak Sahir at home could hold this side. And I'm going for a one-all draw. I'm actually tempted. Oh, it's tough. I agree with you. I, I think I think Istanbul will put on a really good show. I think this will be a tough night for PSG. And I actually can see Istanbul nicking it. I think this is a shock of the round. I think it's going to be a 2-1 win for Istanbul. When, when PSG blow them out 5-0, everyone is going to point out our Hey, course. they might well do, and a lot of people would say they should do. And obviously, you point back to the fact of saying they've got players like Neymar, they've got players like Mbappé. If they turn up, they can win any game of football against any given side. Except yes. Them. Okay, it's kind of a, it's the final game of the Champions League. We can't call it a main event because clearly the Europa League is the main event, but it is kind of a middle main event. The Red Devils versus East Germany Leipzig. There's he's nothing gone. scarier than the Soviet Union, my friend. <laughs> nothing scarier. He's gone back to being so ghoulish and freaky. It's sent a shiver down my spine going into this one. Thomas, our Man United back. I don't know if they're back, but that was a really good performance on their part. Really quickly, let's go into it. Um, Luke Shaw looks significantly better as a center back than he does as a left back. It keeps him back and defending, which is what he's actually good at, and stops him from going on crazy forward runs and getting totally out of position. Uh, Twan Zabi, should we just talk about that? A fantastic performance at the back from him. Brilliant. Kept everyone yeah, in really his pocket. Good, really good performance for him. Um, uh, PSG are going to be really lucky if they have Neymar and Mbappe available for this game, because I'm pretty sure they're still in wan pocket, because he literally had them in complete control all night. He was all over the shot dominating them. Bruno Fernandes had a standard good game. Kaylor Navas obviously saved the first penalty, but he was off his line. He had literally been warned about it 30 seconds before, so you can't say a lot. Uh, and cometh the hour, cometh the Rashford. And all of a sudden, Rashford looks like he's taking everything in life seriously, not just kids not eating food, but literally, that was a fantastic finish from him. Absolutely just spanked it into the bottom corner for the win. And I thought Man United were value for money in that game. Absolutely. It was a great game. Uh, any neutrals watching it would have seen a wonderful game of football. It's very end-to-end. -end. There was times in that second half where it was just like, you have a go, we have a go. It was frantic. But I definitely thought Paul Pogba coming on made a difference for Man U. I thought he did really well playing further up the field um, and uh, played a big part. Who in knew? Game. Who knew playing a cam up the field would be an effective thing instead of telling him to tackle people? I don't know what a cam is, so uh, I'm just going to assume you meant Emre Chan. Um, yes. And, really uh, quickly, also, everyone that hated David De Gea last season, please look at every performance this year. He was fantastic against PSG. He had two or three saves that were classic De Gea, but don't say it. All you ever say is he should have caught it. Don't do that today. Honestly, how has he let that own goal in? <laughs> Martial, Martial, brilliant defensive header. That, he let it in. Give your is... score, Tom. Give your score. That was such a fantastic header. Oh, really quickly, RB Leipzig beat Istanbul 2-0. Uh, Angelino had two goals. They were they they were value. Uh, Man United to beat RB Leipzig 3-1 because we can't keep a clean sheet. I'm throwing a spanner in the works here because I thought RB Leipzig were really good and they've looked really good. And I think this is the sort of side that Man United will be worse against than PSG. I think they're an excellent outfit, very well organized, play very good football, uh, uh, extremely quick the way they move the ball through the lines and I think they'll cause Man United a lot of problems Angelino could score two very smart goals and I actually think Leipzig are going to beat Man United Tom I Scum! Man United 1 Leipzig 2. Scum! That's said I'm not doing the outro, you did the outro. Well, we're not at the outro Tom because we've got to do rapid fire rapid oh. fire Europa League <laughs> that's right, that's what you've all been waiting for, we start with Royal Antwerp versus Spurs Spurs will win Spurs will win, 4-0. 
Okay, well, I'll do it quickly then. Spurs had a good win, a predictable win over uh, Lask, uh, Morrison, uh, and an own goal with the goal scorers. Royal Antwerp beat Ludogorets 2 1. It's a real shame. I've got family that live in Antwerp, and my brother and his son would love to go to this game because his son's a massive Tottenham fan, and unfortunately they can't, so that's just a personal little note for me. It's very, very sad. But Spurs will win. I think they'll win. Uh, it will be easy 2 1 Spurs. AEK Athens versus Leicester City. Just before you say anything, Leicester win 4 0. Yep, okay, well, yeah, they should do. Athens lost 3-0 to Braga. Uh, Leicester won 3-0 against Jura. They expected to win. They'll win this one as well. 2-0 Leicester. Glasgow Rangers versus Lech Poznan. The Poznan will be doing the Poznan as they beat Rangers 3-1, but Kimar Roof will score another worldy. I think Rangers will win. They had a great win in their first game against Standard. Uh, Lech Poznan lost 4-2 to Benfica. Uh, Obviously, go and watch this game, guys. If you haven't seen Kim Aru's goal, it is a worldie from the halfway line. Oxford fans, reminiscent of his goal he scored against Brentford. If you haven't seen that one, go check that out. It was very similar. Reminded me of it. But I really like Kim Aru. Great player. Hopefully, he's going to get his career back on track. Uh, he got a lot of shit from the standard Liège fans. Obviously, last year he played for Anderlecht. It didn't go down well that he scored that kind of a goal. Lille versus Schaltic. Lille win 2-0. Yeah, I think Lille will win as well. Celtic, are, there's a lot of bad things going on at Celtic at the moment. A um, lot of off-the-field problems. They lost to the Rangers recently as well. They lost 3-1 to AC Milan. I think this Lille side will be too strong. I think 2-0 to Lille. And finally, we do reach the main event. Arsenal versus Republic of Ireland's finest, Dundalk. This is the only area where I'm going to give any commentary whatsoever. Congratulations on Arsenal for making Rapid Vienna look like one of the greatest sides in world football and only just managing to scrape a 2-1 victory. But you will beat this Dundalk side 3-0. Yeah, this is a, obviously this is one where Arsenal are going to rest a bunch of players. Uh, great for Dundalk to go get a game against Arsenal. I think Arsenal will win uh, three goals to nil. But yeah, they were extremely erratic in the game against Rapid Vienna. Uh, but they did. It was good that they were so poor and managed to turn it around. But Leno did his best to throw the game. For them. I don't know why they sold Martinez. Because Leno's better than Ramsdale, De Gea, and um, Henderson rolled into one. Okay, folks, this isn't a microphone, but I'm going to pretend it's a microphone. And I'm not going to do much talking in this segment because I don't really have too much to say. Um, I feel this man has a rant brewing. L give him at least five minutes. I know it's a long video, but give him a few minutes to get this off his chest. Tom, what are your thoughts on what everybody must perceive as a great European Super League? I'd like to congratulate the top teams in Europe for being a bunch of four-letter words beginning in C and ending in T. Oh my God, you guys are the actual worst. Oh, we've gone out and gotten five billion pounds of funding to pay off this league so we don't have to play it. Are you guys actually joking? Has football not proven to you how important the lower leagues actually are to it and how if you cut them off and if they disappear, there won't be any football. There'll just be 18 of you playing each other. It's an absolute joke. It's disgusting. I don't understand how, how they're doing this. I don't understand if every, is this happening in every league? Like Spain, Germany, Portugal, France, is this all happening? Are we all okay with this? Is this just started? Because I don't get it. I don't get how Project Restart comes out and it's shot down, like roundly shot down and shot down by clubs that were going to be given the power to, of control in it. And then all of a sudden the European Super League rears its head. And I thought we'd gotten rid of that. I thought that had been put to bed. I thought we'd accepted that this isn't America. We're not one giant state. We're like 20 different countries that play in this awesome competition that makes everyone money, that's insanely inclusive, that has teams like FK Krasnodar, Istanbul, Basas Kahir. We've got the UEFA Cup with Royal Ant Antwerp, AEK Athens. Like, do we only want to watch 18 teams play football now? Like, how boring does that sound? I don't want to watch Man United versus Barcelona twice a year, every year from now on. That's part of the fun. They're taking the fun out of football. Like it's just getting me down now. VAR is take is like bringing every game down, and then the actual teams are like, "Oh well, cut it out, cut it out." We don't even want change. We want no change. We want all twenty of us in this league with no relegation. All of us making a ton of money, and we're gonna make the league small enough that we can also travel the globe for a month before we even go to make ourselves more money. It is shameful. 
is genuinely shameful. It's just like Project Restart. It's a ridiculous money grab. It shows nothing to the fans. And I genuinely mean this. If a European Super League happens, not only do I not support Man United anymore, I, I just don't support football. Because allowing it to happen by FIFA, UEFA, and all the other administrations, it's a crime. It's ridiculous. And it takes football from the people. And this is very much the people's sport. And just gives it to a bunch of rich billionaires that already own whole countries, generally. So, no. Well, Thomas, brilliant, as always. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we, we've already put the likes and subscribe stuff first. Thank you to everybody. We're going to round this video off really quick. But I am just going to quickly give my rebuttal as to why the Super League will be a wonderful thing.